Winston Goodfellow here, Auto Aficionados, here with Matt Backhouse in Street Mark Exotics up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, picking a row of cars to cruise down in his shop. You'll see as we walk down this a fantastic rainbow of colors. So why don't we start with our day Tomasa Mangusta here? This, if memory serves me correctly, won best of show where and when? I believe it was 2017 or 18. Oh, you know something, um, Mr. Smart Guy. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey. 17. So, okay. 2017, Concorso Italiano at uh, Pebble Beach. Uh, first time a De Tomaso had won that show. So the De Tomaso Club was real excited about that. Right now, we're in our what I would like to call service department. Um, we put the cars together out here after they've been restored. Right now this car's back uh, because it just had some brake uh, squeaking noises and stuff. So we got the brakes all apart. We're gonna service it and get it back to the client. So that's why it's in here right now. Any issues with this during the restoration? This was one of a pretty straightforward restoration as far as restorations go. When you buy a De Tomaso Mangusta, you could buy one that's not in too bad a shape or you could buy one that's in horrible shape. They seem to need the exact same kind of work. So it's got new rockers and floors and you know, so you did, all the aluminum work. work yes. Even though it was in pretty good shape, but it was a pretty straightforward restoration. But the real trick with this is to get a, a proper complete car. So you don't have to right. go chasing parts. Yes, it's got a Ford engine in the back. Right. But finding all the miscellaneous knickknacks, I can only imagine. Yeah, the Ford engine helps, but you're right. If you're missing parts, it's just as difficult on these as a Ferrari. You know, you gotta go hunting and making parts. Yeah. So they can be expensive to restore. And then this this guy's all dialed in, ready to drive. It's a great car. It's actually been driven quite a bit. Cool. Uh, and that's why we got it in for the, the brakes and just getting her tuned back up for the guy. Summer's coming in Wisconsin, so get her ready to roll. And then at one time, I'm assuming it was looking like this uh, Maserati Sebring. Yes. What's the story on this? Well, uh, it's an interesting story because one of our clients who we restored many Maseratis for, he's uh, in Santa Monica. He bought this car at the auction out in California a couple years ago when they closed up the Maserati Museum. I wish I could tell you more about this, a small, small little... Oh, got it. There was a Maserati Museum out in California. Yeah, small, small yep. little thing. And, and they had a couple cars that were in restoration, two Sebrings, uh, two Sebring 2s. They tried to put the parts with the cars because there was two of them. And they set them up and they sold them as two project cars. He was there in bidding. The only really interesting thing I could tell you about this car, because it's in the middle of restoration. Yes. He was out there bidding on the car. This is this gentleman's name is Carl. And one of our other clients who owns this car <laughs> flew out to California and was bidding on this car against him. And unbeknownst to me, yeah. I didn't know Carl was there and bidding on it. I knew this gentleman was. And Carl called me and says, hey, I won that Sebring at auction. I was like, oh, geez, you guys were bidding against each other. <laughs> so that was kind of a wow. interesting little deal with that car. Bit of, bit of a headache for you though, sit with a car all apart or did you? Well, it, it will be, as you can see. We still don't know what all the parts that are missing on this car are. We do know that there are some missing. We have a small list, so we're looking for little parts. We'll start making parts as needed. But really, some of these little things you really don't find until you're trying to put part little A together with part little B, and you're like, oh, I'm missing something, you know? Question. So to do a total restoration on something like either one of these, ballpark figure. Well, just so you know, just to keep I don't like to throw those numbers out in public very often, but this car, low end of the spectrum for a good restoration nowadays at the hourly rates and the cost of materials. Yes. And, Everything nowadays isn't like it was 10 years ago when you could restore a car for 150 or 200 yeah. grand. That just doesn't exist anymore. And some really, really, really difficult restorations, which these aren't, you get up to half a million dollars. So it would be safe to say to really do something right like this, you're looking at three to 500. Yeah, I, I don't think this car would ever be that much money because it's yeah. not real complicated or difficult. Um, if you get into rebodying and stuff, yeah. that's so when you we get could the, even go two to five hundred. Would, yeah. would be a reasonable ballpark. Yeah. Well, you ain't restoring anything for two hundred grand anymore. Nothing Italian, but it American, also, but, American. But it also depends upon the type of restoration. If someone wants yes. just a nice street restoration to drive in and enjoy, rather than a show restoration. I'm so glad, so glad you said that. Hey Matt, uh, I just I don't really need it to be a show car restoration. I just want to drive it. Well, Winston, where do you want us to cut back in our work? Where do you want us to not do a good job? It's really, it's difficult to do that. It's really kind of difficult to dial back a quality restoration. A quality restoration is a quality restoration. 
they don't all have to be buffed out to go sit on the lawn at Pebble Beach, that's true. How much money is that really gonna save you, buffing a car? But we're not gonna make a car wavy or put or put, of course. Or put squeaky, squeaky door hinges on things, you know, so. But it's because the last three to five points almost like doubles the price right. or something crazy. Right, it does, because uh, the amount of attention you have to put into uh, paint detail, sanding, buffing, detailing, can be extreme. You yes. can spend months doing it. Yeah. Bingo, Maserati Bora. I mean, it's funny, I'm not even recognizing these wheels, because I normally see the- like, They are an aftermarket wheel on that car. Okay, thank um, you. From a different model Maserati. This car, nice car, unfortunately, the owner of this car, he's a local gentleman, he was taking this car out and driving, it was breaking down on him every time he took it out. Oh boy. And he was like, I can't take it anymore. Um, can you guys see what's going on with this car? And so we brought it in, we found a bunch of wiring issues and you know electrical issues all over the car. Yeah. Um, so they got in there and fixed that. The, the distributor wasn't working properly, so it wouldn't run and idle right. And there's just a lot of issues. and. Now the hydraulic reservoirs are leaking and the master cylinders leaking and all those little uh, <laughs> Citroen components. Yes. They're getting rebuilt and then it'll get replaced in the car. And then this whole car will hopefully be back out on the road this summer again for the gym. Awesome. Do us a favor, take off the American bumpers. Put I, the Euros not on Not real there. attractive. <laughs> oh, it still no. looks good though. Oh, yes. Yeah. Nice to yeah, piece of you work. Can't yes. beat, you can't beat the, uh, the Euro bumper on those. They, they're so good looking. Oh, yes. Totally agree. Totally right. cleans up the car. Interesting, because Giugiaro design, Giorgetto Giugiaro design, 1970. A few of them in a row here, yeah. Yeah, going to uh, another Giugiaro design from 1963 to 65 on the CISO Grifo. Right, this is a car we restored, what year was the the ESO class at Pebble? 2021. Okay, all right, so we restored this yeah. car in 2020, and we won an award at Pebble Beach with this one in the ESO class, taking second to the prototype A3L. Yep. It's back because we're gonna get it all into show detail because it's going out to Monterey again this year to show at the Quail, and then- and the Giugiaro class. At the yes. Giugiaro class, yeah. Yeah, lovely piece, great color. So we're kind of just getting her all uh, show prepped up for the gentleman. And but if I'm remembering correctly, you guys did have a lot of metal work on this car because... It had the wrong nose on it. In this car's history, it was wrecked, probably back in the 70s or 80s. Yep. Probably 70s because he, whoever had the car at the time was able to get a Series 2 nose from So Isa. with a covered headlight, yes. Yeah, and they put that on the car. However, everybody knew it was incorrect. And so when this gentleman restored the car, we had to reconstruct a new nose from him. And, and, and when we get back in the metal shop, uh, we actually have a buck for ESO Griffo noses. I'll show you, it's hanging Perfect. on the wall. Awesome. And that's how we constructed the front end of this car. And then this one has the Chevy small block in it. This one's got the 427 in it. Yep. Yep. Same owner uh, owns both these cars. This particular car, it had the wrong motor. It had a 454 in it. Mm -hmm. He had it in a shop out in California. I, I'm not really sure why he pulled it from there and sent it here. I never really asked him, but he was happy with what we did here. And he just wanted everything to be right under the hood. He wanted to have the right, you know, the right number motor, the right parts. So everything, everything wanted to be correct on it. Date coded to around the time of manufacture of the car. Yes. Yeah, so that's why that's here. Uh, the motor's actually just sitting right up there. Um, ready to go in because this car also is going to be at Quail and also be at Concorso this year. So then we'll get it show prepped up and have it out there this year as well. If memory serves me correctly, you guys did not restore this car. No, I think he purchased this car as you see it here. How often do you guys get a car where it's either gone to one shop or it's gone from shop to shop to shop and now you have to basically... I you're... would say our restorations that we do is a very high percentage um, that we get basket cases. And when I call them basket cases, they come in baskets because another shop is taking them apart or the owner is taking them apart or for whatever reason. We do have cars that come from shops that maybe didn't know what to do with the car properly, you know, because it does take some understanding of the cars. And So what you're saying is you should really change the name of your business from street work exotics to basket case restoration. <laughs> It'd probably be more correct. So now we've got another Mangusta. Fascinating seeing the orange and the yellow, but this is classics, late 60s colors. Yes, and it's fabulous with the white interior. Yes. I think we're gonna be playing with this guy tomorrow. This will be in your Giugiaro class this year at the Quail as well. Awesome, I'm looking yeah. forward to seeing this mother out on the road. 
Yeah, and she, it's a great car. It's just finishing up restoration, actually. Uh, How long you know, did that take, the restoration? This car's been here for a few years. The owner, kind of a, a nonchalant restoration. Yeah. You know, I don't need the car. You know, take your time. And then so, there's yeah. some guys that they just pay as their cash flow allows. Not this guy. He's got all the money in the world, but he's also got a lot of cars. So, so he's not sitting there yeah, waiting nice for this car. Nice problem to have. <laughs> and then we move along to basically same period, entirely different type of machine. Lamborghini Solero S. I had one of these back in the day um, as my only car. This is a fantastic driver. And this thing, the colors on this are stupendous. Total Fabulous. restoration done by you guys? Yes, yes. This car was purchased from Goldwing Motor Cars in, uh, I believe they're in Pennsylvania. Yeah, down the East Coast. Uh, yeah, somewhere, somewhere, yeah. yeah, out there. And uh, it was in rough shape. It was bad. And uh, it took lots and lots of coach work. It's one of the very few S models. He was able to pick out his colors. You know, this is the Pinot Verde. There was a couple Lamborghinis that were painted in this mm -hmm. Pinot Verde. I believe the original prototype for the 350 GT was in Pinot Verde, if I'm not mistaking. Okay, because now we're talking, okay, you're talking production prototype or prototype prototype. Yeah, yeah. They, and now yeah. we're going off down geek way. <laughs> but anyway, a few production cars were made in this color. And when he saw this color, that's what he wanted. Did you see much, because if memory serves me correctly, the same owner of this also has a 402 plus two. Yes. Did you see much difference underneath in terms of the mechanicals? Well, they're identical. That's what I thought. Yeah. And then in terms of the build quality, because that's done by Turing, this is done by Marazzi. Well, yeah, you know, the build quality is very similar, you know, it, it's, but this car is probably a little more refined in the way the body and everything yep, was made yep, yep. than the 400 GT. Oh. Um, but yeah, the underneath the skin, uh, identical. Identical, fine. That's what I thought I was just, if there was one guy that was going to know it would be you. Yeah. Our uh, upholstery shop nailed it on the interior, man. It's fabulous. It's got the velour in, inserts and everything like only the S models had. And so is that standard across the S models? Because mine also had that. That exact color on every one. No matter what color your car was, what color your interior was, you got that velour insert. Red interior with me. Yep. Silver, silver, gray exterior. It was fantastic. Yep. Yeah, this is a great car. I've really, really came to love this car. It's a great design. It looks fabulous. It's fast. This is one of those, if you want a Lamborghini, this is gonna sound so strange these days, if you want a Lamborghini that you could drive every day, you can literally drive this every day because it's comfortable, easy steering, you know, blah, 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 all that type of stuff. So I looked up Winston Goodfellow on YouTube and I saw, oh, I'm gonna do a little tour of Quail. This car was at the Quail last year. And you probably don't even remember that you saw this car there. No, uh, but you did a little thing on this car. And you're like, I had a car that I drove as an everyday driver oh. and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And that's what you were saying oh, about yes. it. Oh, yes. Right here, Lamborghini. The Solero GTS. I had one of those. That was my only set of wheels. I have to admit, between 350, 400, 402 plus two in the Solero, I'll take this. I like the looks. And it just has, because it had been production basically for five, six years, mm -hmm. it has that much more refinement with it. If we move along here, now we're getting to a real railbird. That's one of a hundred. This is one of three, this yep. Maserati. Yep. So am I correct in understanding that this car was originally ordered by a Saudi prince? That's my understanding, yep, yep. The uh, first one was obviously made for the Shah so of course, Iran. Yep. A couple other people were like, well, if he can get one, I should be able to get one too, you know? And so that's my understanding. And then this one got traded hands a few times. It went back to Maserati. It was owned by the Maserati family for a while. Adolfo Orsi, does so that the, sound right? So the Orsi family owned Maserati. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, he had the car for a while and it moved around a lot and it didn't went to different shows. And uh, the current owner, he bought this car at auction about a year ago. Mm -hmm. We just started on this car. I mean, it just got into production about a month ago. All we've done so far is disassemble the car. It's a complete restoration. And this is what we have underneath. This car is actually in pretty good shape as far as what we see usually. The, the body's very beat up, but it's not rusty. Uh, the mechanicals were in pretty good shape, but needing attention. So we're hoping to have this one done for next that, year's Monterey week. That's probably a realistic timetable, but it's just so, oh man, when you start getting into, you know, old 4K Maserati V8s and all that type of stuff. Well, the nice thing here is we're back here getting the body and paint work ready. Mm -hmm. We'll do all the coach work on it if it needs it, and it will need a little bit, not much. 
Um, we'll straighten all the metal out and we'll get it over there and we'll get it painted. While we're doing that, they're out there doing that. Yes. They'll meet at the end out there in the front. So we're not gonna like, oh, I'm restoring this and then when I'm done with this, I'll go work on the motor. I'll be curious to see what colors it ends up. Cause this, this is kind of- We'll an keep it a secret then. You know, <laughs> well, when you look at the shape of this, this could be a little tricky with colors, but that's kind of a fun challenge. Yep. All right, so bang, then we go to Jag SS100. Yeah, um, one of the only pre-war cars we've done um, a local gentleman owns this car who has quite a few cars. He was having some difficulties with another shop. Not that their ability or anything like that, but just kind of their ability to get it in their schedule and get it done. It had been languishing. Yeah. Matt, for me, has always been a strong point of your guys' shop, because I think this is to say I've, I've heard that line before, but you guys get things done on time. Yeah, when he bought this Maserati back here, well, we can restore the car in 18 to 24 months. That's not difficult, but when can we start on the car? You know, because yes. we do have a work log. So, yes. so we have to be realistic with the clients when they mm -hmm. get a hold of us. Well, when can you do the car? Well, we can get it in the schedule here. And once it's in schedule, we don't want to stop. So we have to kind of get all our ducks in a row, make sure we have a client that's on the same page yes. as us. Yep. Because we don't want anybody to have surprises, the client or us. And then so it all meets together at the end. Talk to us about uh, what looks to be the porcupine finish. Well, we had to make uh, the, a lot of the fenders on this car. Um, it, that's how it came to us. The other shop was trying to coach the fenders. We essentially got them in pieces um, and we had to finish it. Now, what those are, those are just a temporary fastener. Underneath here is like a stiffener plate that yep. goes underneath here and that helps stiffen it up. It's being held in there right now with this instead of rivets. When we're done, that'll be rivets. Got it. And that's original. Um, and they're holding on the little trim strips on the quarter panel too. So they just, we just got a little tool, you just grab that, pops that out of there. Um, and then you don't have to put the permanent uh, fastener in there. Boy, I'll tell you to get that fender line right. We spent some time on that. A lot of pictures, a lot of back and forth with the client. This gentleman is local. He likes to come over here and look That's at it. That's helpful. He likes to come over here and look at it and say, oh, you know, I think that should be a little more round up here, or this should be a little bit wider. Mm -hmm. And okay, fine, we'll do it, you know. That's dude's writing the check. Right. It's how high would you like us to jump? Exactly. <laughs> Got to get it right. This is done in coach shop. Um, if it wasn't, this would just be raw aluminum. That's why it's got the epoxy primer on it now because it's going to metal shop to get ready for paint yep. or paint shop to get ready. And hopefully we'll have this car painted and I don't know 100% sure if we're gonna get it running for him or not. Uh, that's still kind of up in the air, but we'll do the upholstery work and you know get the top all, all sorted out for him. And this car will be out of here before fall. Nice. Interesting thing about the uh, Jag, the SS100 was then basically with the, the model's name was based on the maximum speed of the car, which back pre-war, 100 miles an hour was really some speed. Yeah, this is a 36. Yes. I'm seeing a nose poking around the corner here. Another Mazer. Mexico. Right. Yeah, and that came from another shop. You were asking about that earlier. Yes. But not a restoration shop, a collision repair shop had it. Ooh. Yeah, uh, the gentleman, so it had really bad work in it. We had to remake all the bottom of the car here uh, because it was just filled with Bondo and all kinds of stuff. So we're just trying to get all that sorted out. The gentleman that owns it, own, he's, he owns a big company and he just loves the car. He's worked on it, he's had it forever. He's worked on it himself, but now he just wants somebody like us to just he needs to get this sorted out for me so I can have the car back. So that's all we're doing here. We'll get it painted up for him, then he can have it back. You gonna do mechanicals on this? Uh, no, it? no, it's, it runs and drives. You well, know. that makes your job sort of easier. Yeah, you know, it's not very often that happens here that we take a car that runs and drives and do all this work to it, but this one does. We're just, we have to just be careful to kind of protect the mechanicals on it. I've always liked uh, the design of the Mexico because it's just that understated, mm -hmm. I like and, it. and in many ways it's almost like an ESO. Yeah. In its terms of the East or Volta. Looks, it looks a lot like a Volta. Yes. And I don't know, the, the uh, prototype Mexico is fabulous. That one had the different, I think the that, different yes. end on it. Oh, yes. yeah, fabulous. Yeah, I know the car you're talking it's about. It's too bad it just a little bit more like the prototype. But yeah, it's a good looking car. Oh, agreed. Yeah, speaking of ESO stuff, I was noticing up on your wall there, 
and it's tying into what we were talking about uh, with the Griffo earlier. Right. Tell us about that. Your, your, we'll call it art piece hanging on the wall. Yeah. Which no, is functional I, art, I, actually. Right. I'm storing it up there for in case yeah. we need it again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the front end uh, of the Griffo. So. Uh, that's just basically a metal, uh, I wouldn't call it a buck, it's just a yeah. guide. It's almost like a template. Yeah, it's a template. It, that's exactly what it is. So, so we're not going to take a hammer and, and just beat it over that like a buck. Yeah. That's just so we can make the pieces fit it to it, weld them together, uh, and then so we can make a front end, another front end off of that. So what we did with that one is we copied it from a, a car that was correct. Yeah. We did have to tweak some things a little bit here and there because ESO front ends, every it's, one of them is a little bit different. And it's so hard to find one that hasn't been smacked. Yes. And every one, if you look at 50 pictures, you'll see 49 different cars. So, you know, you just got to kind of get get it the way you like it and see if it's right, you know? So that So we have that as a template to work with. When you're doing that type of metal work, are you using the stumps you have over there, the English wheel? What are you guys doing to form that? Uh, well, the stumps was 10 years ago um, when my shoulder and stuff were stronger and they work great. And the nice thing about stumps that when you're working with aluminum is yes. it's mar free. You know, yes. you get a perfect mirror finish when you're done. Uh, I've kind of evolved to some machines. I got the Eckhold over there for shrinking and I got a power hammer. Yep. and stuff now in case I don't want to do too much with That's the right, shrunk. in case your shoulder is still giving you grief. Yeah, right, right. We have all kinds of different techniques. We can we can hand form, yeah, and we can use the machines, but yeah, we have everything here. Awesome, bud. Great to spend the time. Glad to show you around. And for those of you aficionados looking for a good restoration shop, Streetwork Exotics, Pewaukee, Wisconsin, good guy to talk to. We'll see you on the road.